Well, good Tuesday afternoon right here in the WTUD studios for the first time. I'm Russell Snyder, voice of the Tiffany University Dragons, and alongside Tiffany University head football coach, Coach Chris Reiser. Coach, how are we doing today, sir? Doing awesome. Doing awesome. Great Tuesday. Appreciate you having me on again. Well, I'm happy to be here with you in the new digs. Your first time here in the WTUD studios. So this is where I do all of the prep work for everything that we do for the games, where I do my day-to-day -day work, and uh, where you are here now for on Tuesday. So welcome into the digs, man. I love it. I all love right. it. It's an impressive spot. There's no wonder you put out such great material. Well, here we are, Coach, with your Dragons 2-0 after a big 2-0 uh, and in two conference games. And really, you know, Walsh, we talked about last week, is a, a step up from where they were last year. But then to, this past week was a step up in competition again. Ohio Dominican coming off a big win opening week against Finley. And they brought a pretty darn good football team in there on Saturday. And I think the folks got treated to a good football team between two really good football teams. Yeah. Good, good football game between two teams. For so. sure. No, we knew all week that was a really talented team. You know, talented and well-coached and, and Coach Cummings and his staff do a tremendous job and I think what you know you're going to get from those guys they're going to play hard they're going right. to play for 60 minutes and you're going to have to earn um, every bit of it and right. I thought that our guys consistently kind of kind of met that challenge and and, uh, and earned what they needed to to be able to walk out of there with the win and, and go 1-0 one more week. Beautiful day on Saturday we celebrated the golf team being GMAC champions the men's golf team and just like I said a gorgeous day bright sunshine a lot of great day for the folks who uh, made it down to, to the stadium good crowd on the Dragon side good crowd on the Panther side so it was a great day for everybody to be enjoy some great GMAC football here in downtown Tiffin, right? <laughs> it was. No, it was. I think uh, I think this week will be even even more fun, and, and so get as many people as we can over to that stadium would be a really big piece for us, and uh, hopefully to be able to enhance that home field advantage. We'll talk about Indianapolis in a little bit, but first, Coach, let's go ahead and recap this past week. The Dragons scored first in the opening quarter, and on the way to the, um, the uh, well, let's see, hold on, let me look at my notes here, make sure I got it right. Okay, so on the way to get in the end zone, a couple of big plays happened on the way. Let's talk yeah. About the first one, it was a, a third down and eight play at your own twenty-seven yard line and an eighteen yard pass from Christian Carter to Anthony Carter. Tell us about the play. Yeah, no, uh, Christian to Anthony and, and first third down of the game. Right, it was third and eight. It was third and three, and we had a had jumped off sides and got us into a third and eight. And um, and I thought really just a tremendous protection by the guys up front and a good throw and catch by Anthony. And anytime you can get that first first down, right, that's when drives start to really come together. And I think that was a really pivotal play in that drive. And I really kind of got Anthony going for the game. Went up having a really big day, him and Mr. Carter. So another big play on that drive. You convert, had to convert a fourth down and you're at the Ohio Dominican 35-yard line. Fourth and one, you went ahead and went with the quarterback sneak. Yeah, quarterback sneak on fourth and one. And it's one of those plays that um, that has a really high success rate, really, when you look at high school football, pro football, college football. And uh, just another example that guys executed really well. I thought our big kids up front, um, you know, most of the day controlled it. And that's another example of, of that happening. Well, you lean on your big fellows up front and you got a big guy like Darius for a little help in the back if you need yep. to as well. And that kept the drive going and set up a third down and one at the Ohio Dominican five-yard line. Christian Carter little uh, up the middle. It's our, actually cuts to the right here on this run, if I remember correctly. He and gets in the end zone. Yeah, no, he's done a really good job as a runner and, and something that we um, you know we, we hope to continue as the as the season moves on and and uh, and you get the big guys you know celebrating that there in the end zone and and um, but uh, but uh, that was uh, an unfortunate event after the touchdown. But um, no, it was a big drive. You know, anytime you can open up a game with a drive and score, uh, I think Certainly. it sets the tone for for what's to come. And, and, uh, and then the guys certainly were able to do that. Yeah, it was a great opening drive. As you said, it totally set the tone for the game. The Dragons go up 7-0. Then the Dragon defense comes out, forces a punt, and then Dragons drive down the field and a 39-yard field goal that was ruled it was missed. Your kicker Nick thought it went through. You know, it was a nice-looking kick. I couldn't tell from where my vantage yeah. point was, but it had to be, like, right on the edge. Yeah, I think it was right on the cusp. I think it, it came down to being a bang-bang call, and and, um, and the official saw it one way, and I'm not saying I agree or disagree with <laughs> Um, but I, I certainly, from my vantage point, it, it looked like a, success, like a successful kick and, and uh, ended up not being that. And so I think that's one of those things where um, hindsight's twenty twenty, and you go with the guy that had the eye in the sky and that was the official. And so uh, they made the call. And um, it was unfortunate because I thought we had really protected it well and, and, and Nick had made a good kick and, um, and it put us in a good spot to go up 10 zip, but ended up being 7 zip. And credit Ohio Dominican because they could, you know, Dragons moved the ball on them a couple times, got the one touchdown, didn't get the three. And then they come back down and score. Ty Wiley, a young man, is a very talented wide receiver for them. Had a big game, a 28-yard touchdown uh, play on this play here to tie the game up at seven and a nice throw from Jake Bird. Yeah, Ty number 11 did a really good job for him. I thought he was explosive in, in quite a few different ways. He was a really good kick returner for him, mm -hmm. right? Did a great job there. And, and this is an example of him using his speed and his athleticism 
to to cause some cause some fits. And so um, I certainly thought he did a really nice job with that, and uh, and it was hard guy for us to cover. And then the t- game's tied up at seven. Uh, uh, the Panthers force a dragon punt, and then Jake Bird again. This time to Austin Davis from eighteen yards out. The extra point was no good, but now the Dragons are playing from behind. Yeah, no, it was um, one of those things where you know. Uh, I don't know that we quite executed our coverage in the back end and, and ended up with a 13-7 game and uh, defense did a really good job of forcing a missed PAT yep. putting pressure on the kid and um, and forced him to make it and, and he wasn't able to and so that gave us a chance to you know in the moment it doesn't feel like a big thing when you miss a PAT but as the game goes on <laughs> right you, you understand the gravity of that and so uh, just the importance of special teams in general you well, know, certainly. It, it certainly uh, illustrates that in a big it way. It can bring that just a sideline level down just a hair and really that can make a big difference in a ball game, you know how much momentum and, and emotion plays in a game of football, for yeah, sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. You're on a cloud nine, and then you miss that kick, and it just takes a little bit of the wind out of the sails, and I thought uh, defensively being able to buck up and really force a missed kick was a big play. 13-7 at the end of the first quarter, and little did we know, that was the last time that the Ohio Dominican Panthers are going to find the end zone. The Dragons struck next. A big play on this drive on second and 20. Christian Carter finds Jalen Thomas for a 19-yard play to set up a third and one and keep this drive alive, for sure. Yeah, it was a really big play. We got behind the chains um, on on obviously the, the, the previous down and, and so to be able to convert this and put ourselves in a third manageable and, and, and in a favorable position and third and one right that's really really where you want to be right um, and so just the execution between Jalen and and, uh, and Christian and the protection was really really sound and uh, we were able to convert on that third and one and move on from there and that's a situation that where was that like a zone where Jalen found that soft spot between the two levels yeah. of the zone and Carter just beat on the same page with yeah I think it's I think uh, those guys guys have a really good connection as Christian does with the other guys with Anthony and Josh and James and and uh, it's one of those things just kind of being able to figure out and feel the soft spot of his zone and and uh, be able to kind of soften yourself in that and not run through a void to get covered and right. you saw that with Jalen being able to do that and then Christian being able to anticipate right. um, kind of his body language and, and how he was going to settle and being able to complete that ball. Yeah second and 20 the fans can be like oh darn here we go and then right. he set that big 19 yard play get the first down and then Justin Felder back to back runs 13 yarder in a 12 yarder here uh, that's not the play that's uh, that play is coming up but Justin Felder goes well th- no this is the just miss yep. from Jalen Thomas yeah we took you a shot there on this play the de- credit the defensive end he was able to get yeah. the pressure on Christian Carter to make him throw that ball a little bit early but he had Thomas down the sideline and if he was able to step into that like normally would I think that was probably six yeah it was a um, little bit of a rush throw we had gotten some pressure off the back edge and so he had to step up and, and kind of got off his rhythm and made made an off platform throw rather than a, a rhythm throw right. and, um, just to just a shade too much. Just a shade too much. But the Dragon offense kept on chugging this time on the ground, though. Justin Felder, and now we have them back to back 13 and 12 yard runs, both of them coming off the right side of your offensive line. Yeah, no, I thought, you know, like like I've said continuously, I, th- I think our guys up front really control the pace and the flow of the game, and, and I thought they set the tone early in that. I thought Justin um, did a really nice job right. uh, on Saturday, just being able to kind of pick through it and take what the defense gave them, but then also being able to accentuate, accentuate um, what the line did and, and take it a step further and I think you saw uh, uh, his talent as a runner and it was really good to see him do that. And as we haven't mentioned the clock is ticking down, ticking right. down ticking down. You line up for your touchdown play with six seconds. Mm-hmm. That's what we had in our game play. I think it was two seconds when you actually yep. scored the play. And your offensive line giving Christian Carter all kinds of time. Usually on the goal line you don't get this kind of time to throw. No, them. no. Again, they, they did a tremendous job whether it was run or pass game. And, and I admit it's a really talented defensive front and, um, and specifically have two really, really good pass rushers off the edge and um, and a good interior pass rusher. And I thought our guys all day really answered the call. Um, and, and that was a great example of being able to kind of go one side of the field to the right. other. And and uh, in a big moment with not a lot of time left and be able to convert, but a great throw by Christian, a great catch by Josh, and um, but certainly uh, set up by the protection. Absolutely. Great job of the offensive line to give that Dragons that 14-3 to lead as you went into the break. And then you got really, really proud of your defense. The first two drives Ohio Dominican has of the football in the second half, two, three and outs. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just wonderful execution by your defense. And that goes to the coaching and everything that you do at the halftime with your adjustments because you know they're making adjustments, so you got to make your adjustments too. So that was a great job of getting guys ready and out there and executing those defensive series. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so proud of our of our coaches. I think that um, you know I'm sure I'm I'm super fortunate to have a great staff that I get to work with. And on the defensive side, you know Brock Carabar, our defense coordinator, and Dave Price, our D line coach, and Tim Bennett, our DB coach, um, all do a tremendous job. And I think you right. saw uh, them really kind of go in and, and come up with some adjustments. And offensively, I think 
think you know Tyler Johns, our offensive coordinator, our line coach, and um, and and Blaze Holder, our receivers coach, and Park Carmichael, our running backs coach. Those guys did a great job, I think, putting together a plan for us offensively to be able to win um, on both sides of the ball uh, in the second half, which is really key. But this um, this drive here, right, was a was a huge drive, and I think the the thing that you'll take away from the game, really, all four touchdown drives were long drives. Right, long, absolutely, um, not especially only, the final one. <laughs> yeah, not only did they did they score, but you control the clock and um, you give your your defense an opportunity to get a little bit of a blow, and, and it allows you to control the consistency and the tempo of the game. And so, super proud of our execution uh, to be able to go on some of those longer drives and right. and, um, and really sustain and come away with points. Well, the third uh, third touchdown drive here in the third quarter was the one that Coach is talking about. Some big plays on this. Christian Carter to Josh Lewis for 11 yards and some nifty footwork by Josh on the far sideline. Yeah, no, a great job by Josh catching a hitch and and uh, and being able to create a little bit. You know, yards after catch are such an important part of our system and uh, really any system in football. But anytime you can throw a ball quick and, and get 5, 10, 15, 20 yards after the catch, um, it really elevates what you oh. do offensively and it creates yeah. it creates much more conflict for the defense because they have to play in a lot more space oh, and, and why, it makes it tough. Wide receivers have become so talented. Yards after catch have become such a thing. There's even talk now of creating that as a separate stat for yeah. the wide receivers for the Without after the catch stat. And it's just, it just shows the talent of those guys that are on the outside. Not only on our team, the teams we face. And then you could just say back and forth then about the defensive backs and the work they get to have together. But I'll take the guys we had wearing gold on Saturday, that's for sure. Another play on this drive, Jerry Spinnick's a 10-yard run, a tough run to get the Dragons a first down after a first down play. Yeah, no, I, I think this is a um, this is a byproduct of, of really the entire day for Darius. I thought he ran really physically. I thought he ran really hard. Um, ran with a chip on his shoulder. I think that you're seeing a, a, a different player than, than where he was last year, and, and uh, we're certainly um, excited that he's on our team. Absolutely. And then a play Darius will probably be talking about for years and years and years, the what-if play, yeah. you know, as he's retired, yeah. talking to his grandkids one day. Oh, this play would be from 80 yards by the time that play is done. But Darius, you put it in his hands, ask him to throw it for you as he tried to find a teammate in the end zone. Yeah, we gave it a go. You know, you got to have a little fun with it, right? And um, and and gave it a go to, to get a trick play and didn't quite go our way. But um, I think anytime you do that stuff, it, it makes people have to think about it. Certainly. Right? And, well, credit um, the DB for playing, yeah, his, doing his he, job he and staying with the job. receiver. Did a great job doing his job. and and uh, But our offense is, is predicated on just having a little bit of fun and, and having as much conflict as possible. And right. Anytime you throw a trick play in, you never know what can happen. Absolutely. Right? So it was um, it was a fun way to, to kind of take a shot. And then I thought our guys weathered it and, and didn't let the shot uh, negatively affect us. We still converted and, and kept things moving. What is it with little Anthony Lowe and his ability to bounce off of tackles? He's shown it the Big first two Indy. weeks. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. He is absolutely electric on the football field. A 44-yard touchdown drive. And he bounces off a tackler in the middle of the field. Looked like it's going to be a first down play, Coach. And then he took the rest all by himself. No, there's no doubt. No, he did a great job, right? Um, we were the blocking get, downfield, too. Yeah, we were able to get him a little bit of space. And, and uh, anytime you can get a get a touch for a guy like that, especially in space, right, then it creates, um, creates a much different flow of the game. And so just being able to get him in an environment where he had a little bit of space and then he did the rest. And, and that's just him being a great player. Right. Okay. The Dragons take that lead into the fourth quarter of 21 to 13. And then in the fourth quarter, or we're still in, yeah, I think we're in the fourth quarter. It's yep. the fourth touchdown. Big play on this drive after a penalty is a car, uh, Christian Carter to Anthony Lowe for 12 yards on the, through the air. Yeah, this, um, as you're, as you're peeking at it, right. Just a nice job again by Anthony feeling space and selling in a void and, and, uh, being able to throw a pitch and catch with Christian and Anthony for sure. How important is it to be able to come back after a penalty and get those yardage back right away? Yeah. I mean, offensively, right. You really want to stay ahead of the chains. You want to stay in, in, you know, first and 10 and in second and six and third and two and, and defensively the, the objective is to knock them out of that. Right. Um, and anytime you get behind the chains, the ability to overcome is, right. is really important. And I was wrong. The 15 yard penalty came before the next play that we have here. I, I jotted down my notes, coach. I need to be a little, you're good. I need no, to be a little neater. So the Dragons get a 15 yard penalty, drove the ball down the 22 yard line, came back to the 37. And then again, just like earlier, we talked about the back to back runs of Justin Felder yeah, again, this time off. 13 and 12 yards again, doing the job and getting the praise from the visiting radio staff. No, it's good. That's good. No, I, I, again, I, I think he ran really well all day and, and uh, this is one of those looks and I think smart cuts. Uh, yeah. Credit to the big boys up front. He, he They gave him the space and, and Justin did the rest and 
Um, you know, you see kind of back-to-back runs, and that really happened twice in a row, right? right Where, yeah. Uh, he had a back-to-back early and then a back-to-back later. And so anytime you can, um, you know, you have a two platoon with, with Darius mm-hmm. and with he, uh, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. And then the Dragons' final score of the day, Christian Carter to Jalen Thomas, an 11-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, big-time play by JT. Good throw by Christian. Great protection. And, and uh, again, you know, uh, football is not a, not a complicated game. It can be very simple. It's not easy, but it's very simple. And it comes down to execution. It comes down to guys making plays and um, and, and putting, them, putting themselves in a position to make that play. And right. when they're there, they do. And cool. so great job by those guys. The, the, the defensive back on that didn't go for the fake there on the hitch there. And, you know, so it's a situation where you put it up where only your receiver can make a yeah. play and hope your athlete's good enough. And our athletes are good enough. Went up there and made the play. So the Dragons got the 28-13 lead. Now it's time to rely on the defense a little bit to ride us home. And Barry Brown with a sack and fumble. And Montez Kelly, who had a big game for you on the defensive side, gets a fumble recovery on this play, Coach. No doubt. No, a great play by Barry. We, um, you know, obviously we were in a in a, in a little bit of a blitz mode there. And, and, and Barry came off the edge. Quarterback didn't quite feel it. And um, really a great play by Barry. And so was super proud of him. And then Montez being Johnny on the spot, being able to fall on it. A really big play. You know, how Dominican was driving into our red zone. And mm-hmm. um, we really needed to stop. And so that was a big that was a big moment for us. All right, Coach. This play, I want you to walk us through how you drew up the deflection pass from Christian Carter to <laughs> Nehemiah Bing. Just how, Nothing we, makes, just how we drew it up. Oh, if The only thing that would have made uh, the offensive lineman more happy is he would have gotten the end zone. Right. The fact that he got an offensive stat like a reception made all the guys go crazy. But what a fun play. Yeah, no doubt about it. No, this, this isn't exactly the one, but oh, it's that's coming not up. The one, yep, yes. It's coming up. Um, that was a Darius Penix. That was that's a what, Dar- the tough 16 yeah. yard. Yeah, you need runs like that. Run. I'm sorry. We got to touch on that because you need runs like that in the fourth quarter when you're trying to put a game away. Darius Penning's going hard for 16 yards. That's tough on the No defense. doubt. No, he was running angry that day, and so that was um, that was fun to see. And anytime you can give it to him and he can be the hammer, it makes a big difference late yeah. in the game. Again, I need to be better with my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so Darius with a big 16-yard run, and then here's the play. Yep. They pass That's how we drew it up. Out. Yeah, we wanted it to go straight to the, the – bounce off that guy, bounce <laughs> off the other guy, and then go to the center. So, so Look at the sideline, Coach. Yeah, we, Everybody's hands in the air jumping up and down. We spent a lot of time all week really, uh, really kind of going over that and making sure that Nehemiah was ready for the catch and, and ended up working itself out in the game. So we're that's happy for that. Do you tell him you get one a year? That's, exactly, that's, yeah. that's it. Exactly. All right. Another big defensive play for you here, Coach. Chucky Lewis with the interception. Yeah, no, great job by, by uh, James Weaver getting underneath the route, right? And uh, and Chucky obviously playing on top of it, having eyes on the queue and, and being able to make a play and make a big-time play. So um, see a big-time celebration from Coach Carabeau there. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> no, it was, it, was, uh, it was kind of a cherry on top and a culmination of a great defensive game. And um, Hot Dominicans are really good offense. And, and I thought our defense rose the occasion and uh, same as our offense. So it was really cool to see, you know, kind of the energy feed off one another and and uh, and play a really physical football game. And then the last big play for the defense, Coach Montez Keller with the final sack of yep. the day for your defense. Yeah, no, kind of, uh, again, this was the nail in the coffin and, and Montez playing on an edge, hit home on third and long and, and created a fourth and really long. And, yep. um, you know, obviously, uh, I, I think effectively ended that thing. They punted and, um, and it was a done deal from that point. Right. Forward. So it was, um, yeah, it was, it was cool to see Montez be able to kind of feel that moment. We always talk about pass rushers being closers, right? And yeah. um, the greatest ones can have that feel that, hey, it's time. And and for him to kind of raise the occasion and, and make that play is a big one. And then everybody's favorite play, Coach, victory formation. Love the victory. Yeah, yeah, I, I had to throw victory. that one in there no, too, right? No, no, I love that. I love the victory formation. That's um, We work it every Friday and and uh, with the objective to be there on Saturday, right. Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon or whatever it is. So really proud of the guys. And, and uh, it was a really cool atmosphere and a good opportunity to get, a, get another conference win. Yeah, we, uh, we mentioned your coaches with the adjustments your defense made in the uh, at the halftime, but you got to be really proud. You said mentioned how proud you are of the, of the guys, but your coaches and the preparation and the adjustments over the first two weeks, everything seems to be right on point with what we're looking for. You guys are responding to what the coaches are putting out there. It seems to be a nice working environment for everybody right now. Yeah, I think so. I, like I said, I'm really fortunate to have a group of guys that I trust and that are really good people and really good coaches and right. um, and take care of our players on and off the field. And I think anytime that uh, those relationships are present, anytime time that, that the players know that um, it's not just a transactional relationship it's an opportunity to build a real relationship right. and, um, and that we're here to help them develop in so many different ways I think our players are more willing to buy into it they trust they trust uh, the football side of things where they know that it's not just about football and so our staff does an amazing job with that and and, um, and these guys from a football perspective they're working their tails off being here late and yep. coming in early yeah. and, um, and there's no stone left unturned so I'm really proud to, to be a part of our staff next couple of weeks the GLVC G Matt crossover. We have Indianapolis this week. Last year we went out there and got a tough road win on a very, very hot day. I remember it being yeah. so hot out there that day. 
the big play was Latrell Robinson interception return for a touchdown and then uh, you know another game next week on the road but uh, Indianapolis only played one game I believe so far yeah. they're one and zero coming in today and we knew last year going out there they're going to be a very tough opponent and I'm sure nothing's changed as far as the Greyhounds are concerned yeah. on that no nothing's changed they're a really really good team I'm, I'm really impressed with them offensively and yeah, they got a new quarterback but he's a really talented kid uh, their running back obviously is an all-american yep. um, one of the best guys that, that obviously we faced um, got some really talented skill on the outside their offensive line is really solid and uh, on the defensive side of ball they play really hard they play really physical they've got some great linebackers they have to, uh, I, I think a really good interior defensive tackle and two really good ends and then a great boundary corner and so right. um, there's a lot of really cool pieces on their defense and on their offense and they do some really unique things schematically that um, that I think give people trouble mm-hmm. and so um, you know we, we have to do our best to, to really prepare the right way and um, knowing that it'd be a tough physical football game and uh, we're going to get a great football team showing up and right. give them our best shot and see how the chips fall. It'd be fun on a Saturday night too or we'll, be able to play a 7, 7 o'clock kickoff I believe kick, on yep. Saturday night down at Frost Count 7 p.m. kick blackout and so wear black and and, uh, and be in the stands be loud be proud. And, Do you leave the lights um, off then since it's blackout? Uh, we might. We might have to right? That might give Nehemiah a chance to catch another ball. Um, but uh, no it'll be a blackout and uh, can't wait for it man. We're excited. It's a great test. Anytime you play a top right. 25 team like yeah. UND and a really good program it's a great test for our program and um, you know we were fortunate to come out of there one and know last year and, and uh, you know really going to have to earn that again this year and, and look forward to the opportunity and to the test. Young guys getting acclimated now settling in you know it's a couple weeks into the school year now a couple weeks yeah. into the uh, season the young guys starting to get the swing of things getting used to everything for you? Yeah I think so I think um, I think our older guys do a great job of really kind of welcoming, welcoming guys into the program sure. and teaching them and and uh, and showing them the way um, and I think that as our season evolves you know you'll see more and more young guys come in and and, uh, and make impacts for the team right. whether it's you know on special teams on offense on defense or even on our scout team where they continue to make a bigger impact and prepare our guys as well as they possibly can you got some uh, you got uh, uh, some conference awards this week Sir, Sir Zion yeah. Dance yeah. yeah yeah Sir Zion is has had two great weeks you know and mm-hmm. so it's it's well deserved in a big way and he's been super disruptive and right. um, and we're super glad that he decided to play here with us this past year and so it's been cool to um, to watch him see watch him play in the defense and, and I think his best football is ahead of him do helmets coming off more now than what they used to it feels like that <laughs> It, it? Yeah, I know. It feels like that for sure. Yeah, we. Um, it, it, I think it's the non-buckle thing, right? It's more of a strap thing than it is yeah, a buckle okay. thing. And so I think you see it a little bit more frequently, whether it's college football or the NFL. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I see it all the time now. Speaking of NFL, what a crazy weekend of NFL football. This you know, weekend. I'm not the guy to talk to for that. I haven't. You don't have I, a lot of time to watch. I haven't. I, I've I've heard some things. I know the Bengals got beat. Um, that was, and, and you won't that see was, a crazier one than that. I heard about that. Uh, yeah. That's about all I know. And right. so other than that, I'm I'm locked into the Dragons and and uh, getting ready to face that. Next week's opponent. All right, when Dragons come out on the field, Coach, this Saturday, the folks will be there ready to rock and roll. What are the folks going to see when your Dragons take the field Saturday night? Same as always, right? Hopefully we're going to play hard, going to play physical, going to play really, really tough and, and play together. I, I hope that our energy shines through and, and uh, we play with amazing effort go forward to 6 to be all day. Blackout Saturday night. Kickoffs at 7 p.m. Frost Cowanow Stadium. The Greyhounds for the University of Indianapolis in town. Should be a fantastic football game. Two really, really talented Division II football teams. So I'm looking forward to hopefully the fans get down there, come on from campus. Come on down from town. Come on over from Indianapolis. It's not that far of a drive. So it'll be a lot of fun, Coach. Thank you so much for taking time for us. We appreciate your time here. Thanks, Russ. Appreciate it. All right. He's Coach Chris Reiser. I'm Russell Snyder. This has been the Coach Chris Reiser Show right here on your home of the Dragons, the TU Dragon Football Radio Network. Thank <laughs> you.